All right, uh, we've got to switch, switch uh, mindsets. We're not talking about living snow fences anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so as the, you know, the, the title is, uh, is Biomass Environmental and Economic Web Application. But to kind of make the point up front here with this tool, um, it's actually built as just a general crop um, enterprise budget tool. So our enterprise budget tool, um, you know, you can assess uh, returns over time for uh, biomass, hay, nuts, berries, corn, soybeans, whatever, any general uh, crop. And we built that, it that way for two reasons. One is that, well, to understand the profitability of biomass in a place like Iowa, um, you need to understand the opportunity cost of producing biomass, and that's the profitability from corn and soybeans. So to really understand um, finances and budgets uh, for biomass, you need to understand finance and budgets for, for corn and soybeans. And so we built the tool so that um, you know, potentially a corn and soybean farmer could look at their current returns and be able to compare them to uh, a, a new crop. The other reason why we built the tool that way is that it's not that much more work to build a general tool instead of trying to build a tool that's so specific to one particular crop because the kind of the underlying framework for these enterprise uh, and environmental budgets, it's all, it's all the same. So we're, all, we're talking about fertilizer and chemicals and um, uh, ag machinery. Um, and so um, that's the reason why. And we're, we're still, we don't have a name for the tool yet. Um, so if you guys come up with anything, it would be great. We would like a nice, nice acronym for the tool. Uh, we're still trying to decide, uh, you know, do we want to go broad with the tool and just say it's a crop tool and be, maybe you'll seek more sources of support or do we want to just really focus on some specialty crops, agroforestry, um, biomass. So, and there's a pretty big team working on this. Um, Josh Gamble, who's here, um, has been uh, working on the tool with us. Is, is Greg or Jomi or Gary in the room? No, I don't, don't see him there, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Dean Curran, who couldn't be here, uh, and uh, Bill Lazarus, who he originally developed the Excel version of this enterprise budget, and that's what we start uh, was our starting point um, in, in, in uh, working towards translating this to, to the web. So uh, Bill Lazarus is the um, is an extension professor in an applied economics department, and that's where I'm a graduate student. So this is a partnership between the Center for Integrated Natural Resource and Agricultural Management. Uh, it's been involved in, in agroforestry for a number of years now. The director there uh, uh, is Dean Current and the University of Minnesota uh, Extension. So um, kind of behind the scenes uh, with the web application, uh, and the first thing we started with was bu bu uh, building this production database. Again, we call it a biomass crop, uh, production database, but it's really just a crop production database. Um, and so this is a relational database using MySQL. Uh, MySQL is the most you know, popular um, uh, relational database on the web. It you know, pretty much r runs most things on the web. Um, and, and so we chose that as, a, as our production database uh, because we were going to build a, a, a web application. Um, this, uh, so how do you get data into this production database? Well, part of the reason why we built the web application is to, to be able to manually input data in there. Uh, we're working on being able to import um, you know, bulk data um, by a CSV file into uh, each data table. And then also, um, you know, in the end, we would like a complete bulk import-export where um, the user can send us a single file or upload a single file and they, um, you know, the, the program will automatically put all those pieces, put the chemicals in the chemical table and fertilizer in the fertilizer tables um, and, and create um, those relations. And right now, um, in, you know, in the long, long run, we would like to have some um, you know, web-based data retrieval, but right now the only way to retrieve data is, is working with us for some uh, custom uh, data query. Um, so we, uh, you know, who are the intended users for this tool? So, uh, you know, one of the um, 
popular users of these uh, enterprise budget uh, tools that a lot of them are built in Microsoft Excel, our extension, um, uh, so natural resource professionals, agricultural economists, and educators, so they can get a better understanding of um, costs and returns um, on for agricultural products uh, in the land. We'd also like to get it to the point, too, where it's usable by producers, so far farmers or crop consultants, and they can actually look at their, their specific scenario and evaluate a uh, number of different crops, including biomass. And it, it, we think it also has potential to be used by researchers. So you have um, people that aren't familiar with economics that understand the environmental piece of um, biomass or the production piece of biomass. Um, but they want to look at um, and get information about budgets for their, their research uh, sites. And so we think that, that there has potential use there. But also economists, so economists that are familiar with agricultural economics and enterprise budgeting, they can run the tool and get environmental output. So they can, um, you know, when they're calculating costs and returns, they can also be able to calculate environmental budgets um, in addition to their economic budgets. So the web application, in addition to a way to get data into the, the, the database for researchers, it's also intended to be a decision support tool. And it, it has, uh, takes inputs about site and field, so um, weather, st you know, weather station information to get climate data, uh, historic management data, and um, you know, soils data, local uh, uh, con field conditions. Uh, input, so what are, uh, on this particular field, what kind of fertilizer are you going to put in, what kind of chemicals are you going to use, uh, what kind of machinery, and what are the costs of all those. And then uh, the main kind of screen is the operations screen. So this is where you define, you know, on May 1st, I tilled the soil with, um, you know, a moldboard, moldboard plow. I'm, um, one, you know... Uh, applied a pre-emergence on May 15th and, you know, I planted on, on May 20th or something like that. And the output is a set of um, budgets. So there's enterprise budgets and these enterprise budgets um, follow the Agricultural Economics Association guide on commodity costs and returns and how to calculate those and um, environmental outputs. And so we're using uh, the century model here to uh, um, uh, simulate um, biomass yields uh, for, for farmers who aren't familiar and don't know what kind of yields they can get on their particular sites, but also um, information on carbon and carbon flows and carbon stocks. And we're also going to uh, use the, uh, a very, you know, very simplistic Russell equation to get some additional environmental outputs about soil loss and phosphorus. And then, like I mentioned before, we also want to expand this to be able to uh, get information about uh, that's specific to research about experiments and uh, design of experiments and plots and treatments um, so that, the, that we can get that data through the web into our um, biomass uh, production database. So. Um, this is a screenshot of the tool. The uh, tool is still under development, uh, but it is on the web, and um, you know, we're actively t testing it. Here's an example of the operations input screen. You can see you have uh, site information, uh, you know, uh, sites and field information, what kind of input data set you're using. So you're using prices from 2014, 2015. Um, and then, you know, just, this is just basically to organize the, bu the different budgets, and we have the main kind of operations screen here. So you can see, you know, what data am I doing this operation? Is it a custom operation? Is it own machinery? Uh, what, you know, what kind of machinery is that? And what are all my inputs in, in, uh, into that? And these, um, you know, uh, these blue buttons here allow you then to access um, the different inputs so you can add additional inputs that you don't have and, and, and all that. Um, I'm not going to go, yeah, too much into the details of everything of how, how it works, but I just wanted to give you an overview here. And we also have, you know, a, a list here. So you can see this is um, a list of um, seeds and plants. So this is prices, um, you know, where they came from, 
you know, what kind of category, what kind of crops they are, what cult cultivars they are, so you can see all the data that you've entered, um, you know, in one uh, nice spreadsheet, and you can uh, be able to download um, and, and in the future be able to upload data into those data tables so you can kind of um, do bulk exports and imports. Here's one of the outputs is this enterprise budget, and so this is kind of our detailed version here. So, um, you know, we're looking, this is a intermediate wheatgrass, 10-year rotation, or 10-year stand life. Um, and you can see we have specific details on chisel plow, field cultivator, what are the costs per acre, how many passes are there, and so you can get very detailed information about, about costs, you know, what's the cost per pound of wheatgrass, how much is put on, you know, how much is put on the ground, you know, what's that total cost per acre. We also give this more generalized, uh, you know, cash flow enterprise budget, so this is looking at um, uh, returns and costs, you know, over the stand life. So here, uh, inter intermediate wheatgrass, we have a 10-year stand life, so we're looking at um, cost and returns over time, and so it calculates and annualizes that information, uh, so you're able to compare it across cops, crops. And while one thing I didn't include here is this kind of budget compare, and that's, you know, kind of the end goal of these reports is to be able to compare returns on an annualized basis between uh, all these different crops. Um, we're also working now on the environmental outputs here. So this is um, a carbon flow output here uh, that uh, is reported from the tool. And so you can see this in this example here. It's an annual crop production system. Uh, you know, carbon is decreasing over time. And then you have a, a planting of willow. Uh, and then you see that increase in, in carbon there. So we, so we have this, uh, you know, uh, enterprise budgeting cash flow, and we have the environmental budget carbon flow. And the way we've built the tool is that you get both reports. So we don't, um, you know, you, you can't just get the environmental report because the, the economics matter, and you can't just get the economic report because the, uh, the uh, environment matters. So, um, you know, we built the tool so that you get all that information. So you get economic budgets and you get environmental budgets. And, so you can use both those sets of information to then make decisions about land management. Um, so the next steps is to move the testing beyond just our research group. Um, so beta test it with extension um, producers and researchers and have a, a, uh, integrate Century fully into the model. So right now, um, based on the, the operations and inputs, we're building input files into Century. And then we're handing those to Josh. And Josh is running those manually in Century. And then he's handing us back the, the outputs. And then we're reporting those. Um, and, but our goal in the future is to have this um, you know, Century model um, uh, working on a server so that we don't need that step, so that the user can just run those simulations um, you know, with, with their budgets at, you know, as is. Uh, the support for this project is uh, Sun Grant, so this is a collaboration between USDA and DOE. Um, and uh, recently we've been working with SENUSA Bioenergy, and both of them have helped support um, our broader research. Uh, that, uh, uh, and part of that, Josh is going to present some results from that this afternoon um, on, on alley cropping. And, uh, but they've also been supporting uh, the development of this tool. So if you have any interest, contact uh, Jomi. Um, I asked him if this was OK before I put it up there. <laughs> but uh, at some point, Josh and I are going to be gone from the university. So, um, so it's best to, to Jomi's the one that's uh, kind of the lead for the decision support tool. So. Mm -hmm. So in Canada, we have large acreage of greenhouses, uh, which are half of our vegetables in the winter come from the greenhouses. So we grew our biomass, biomass usage, uh, 
trying to supply biomass for energy production, for heat production, but when the natural gas prices came down, mm. energy is out of the question now. So we are talking about bioproducts, we are talking about uh, chemical extraction, succinic acid for chemicals from cellulosic. So just your model, like based on the economic emphasis being changed, uh, will your model embrace those changes? Uh, based on why we are growing the biomass and the output from So I think I'm supposed to repeat the question, right, yes, for the okay. recording, okay. So I think the, the question is, is you know, uh, as the you know, bioenergy industry changes, can our tool adapt and be used you know, for these new uh, bio products? And the short answer to that is yes, um, because we are just looking at feedstock production. So our tool is not meant to look at you know, all the steps past that, so conversion steps. And um, so the tool could be used, so whatever the feedstock is, um, you know, and whatever type of plant it comes from, it's generalized so that it can be used for that. So that's where the tool stops. It's basically, you know, production, um, agricultural economics, and, and nothing beyond that. So the tool could be used for that, that, that part of the analysis, regardless of what the end product end or end use is um, of the feedstock. Yeah, so the question is, is, is our tool work on any climate condition and any soil conditions? So um, I think Josh should answer that question. <laughs> I think I think that's it, but um, it's built in a way that we we can expand that. Yeah, yeah. so it's built in a way that's easy to to add additional weather and soil data. Right now, it's, we've just been focused on getting things running and using Minnesota as our case sort of study. But it, it would not be difficult to use um, existing Fresno database and um, NOAA weather station data, um, primarily what we're using. So. Yeah, I think that the you know any limitations would be with the you know the century and the environmental piece. So the, the economic piece, you know, is it, that it can be used in any climate or any so, you know any soil. Um, so it's just the environmental piece. So it's really it would be the limitations of of, of century and the way in which we interact with century. So. Yeah, so CEN USA is actually a, a collaborative project that's out of Iowa State. Um, and so uh, we have not specifically worked with that bioenergy center, and we don't have a similar bioenergy center in Minnesota. Um, but we, you know, um, now that the tool is, we're kind of moving to the next phase of the tool of getting uh, feedback from, from outside the, the development team. Uh, we've really been, just been working on getting the tool working um, and getting it developed to the point where other people can use it and test it, and we would like to, you know, collaborate with other people, um, especially in, in, in that, this, you know, um, we visited them yesterday. They're doing a lot of production with corn stover, um, and so this tool can handle that. We can have a primary product, corn grain, and a secondary product, corn stover, um, and we could use that, you know, to understand the pr production economics, um, you know, of, of cellulosic, um, bioenergy uh, from corn stover, so it's flexible enough that it could it could be used for that case. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's generalized enough, so as long as you know, you know what you're 
potential yields could be per acre and what your inputs are and what kind of machinery you're using and what it costs, um, you know, that, the tool could be used for that. So it can really, it's, it's kind of a broad tool that could be used for um, any biomass or any crop. So once you get to the point of uh, the user can query their own reports, mm -hmm. how easy or straightforward would it be to tweak some numbers and say, well, what if the price was this, or what if fuel cost went that, and run a second scenario? Is it planned that you could do a little bit of that, uh, I guess, kind of a sensitivity analysis on your own? Yeah, so we, um, you know, users right now can query their own data so they so so users can always get their own data I think what I was tr referring to was um, if researchers wanted to collaborate and we wanted oh, to look right. you know across many research projects I want biomass yields and production for willow all willow projects across the United you know you know United States um, but yeah so the, the I think the second part of your question is then you know once users get reports is it is it easy enough for them to then you know, change prices and see, see um, you know, what the returns are. And um, we, we hope that, 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 that that's, you know, a, a feature of the tool um, and it's usable in that way where, where um, you know, it's not just a st uh, static, you know, um, everything's not static and so people will want to look at, well, what if I change management? What if I put 75 pounds of nitrogen compared to 50 pounds of nitrogen? Um, and so they can do that. They can put, put together two different you know, scenarios and compare them. They can put together one scenario, change the numbers a little bit, get some, uh, you know, outputs from it. Um, so we would like that as kind of a feature that people can, because, you know, um, people are going to want to do that. They're going to want to kind of mess around with things and see what the results are. So. Well, let's give David a hand. 